But as an imam, I'm a different hat. So of course, I very act, I'm very active with the youth, and I'm always uh, you know engaged with them in sports and things like that. But I'm also an imam where I go on the pulpit and give speeches as well. Now everyone has been speaking about the issue of the Middle East. Unless you're a person living under a law or an imam like me who's scared to even mention the word or anything related to that. So much so, the people in my community, some of my congregants are actually leaving away from my mosque because they're saying, can't you at least pray for what's happening in the Middle East, right? Can't you at least raise your hands and just pray for them for peace in the Middle East? So some people feel that I'm not speaking on this issue and they're like, you know your First Amendment right. We're not telling you in any way to incite violence, to uh, you know, uh, promote hatred towards a group of people, anything like that. But just speak on this issue. Now I personally know my constitution, I went to school here, I know my First Amendment right and so on and so forth. I actually tell people what is protected speech, what is not protected speech. But personally I'm very, very quiet. Having said that, there's something that I went through in the past, and I want to mention that so that same mistake is not repeated. And I forgive for what has happened to me, but in 2011, I was also falsely arrested. In 2011, and I was looking at somewhere between 45 to 60 years in prison. And 16 months, I was actually in solitary confinement. And if I read the accusations against me, and all of you know exactly what I speak about, I've been to almost all of the mosques, the speeches I give are basically on planet Earth. I did not go anywhere else to give private speeches. They're recorded, they're on YouTube, Zoom sessions, everyone knows what I speak about, and people are shocked, and I'm as shocked as everyone else, that I have never spoken about politics, let alone speak about any political group or anything like that. Uh, and this is what happened to me. Eventually, I was acquitted, right? And uh, again, I know no one is perfect, professional in life with God, but I wanted to know what's our limit, what can we speak? Because on one hand, and I have messages from some congregants, and I told them I'm going to be attending an FBI meeting, and I'm going to raise this issue as well, because you are accusing me that I'm not raising awareness about the Palestinian issue, what's happening in the Middle East. Everyone is talking about it, except for our imam. And over here, I had to spend 16 months in solitary confinement. So I'm trying to see like, what is the balance for us? Where did I go wrong? What's the mistake that I made? And everyone knows my speeches, all of you here. You invite me to speeches of all of the imams. Not that I want to put anyone else under the bus, the other imams. But me, of all of the people, right? I'm always engaged in sports and, you know, when they actually arrested me, they started asking me about a particular group, the TTP. I didn't even know what that stood for. Like, if you want to ask me about basketball, I can tell you more. Tell me about the Miami Heat, LeBron James, and I can tell you about, that's one, you know, uh, we had LeBron James and Dwayne Wade. But anyways, uh, I didn't even know who the Prime Minister of Pakistan was. Right? I was accused of you know, sending money. Uh, they thought I was funneling billions of dollars when actually I couldn't even afford to pay my tuition. Right? When the school that I was studying, I couldn't even pay my tuition. I wouldn't even come home because I couldn't pay for the plane ticket. But they thought that I was a mastermind funneling millions of dollars. And uh, right now, it's just that I've been, <clears throat> of course, I mean, everything is done and I forgive everyone for whatever has happened. But still, you know, you're a human being, no matter how religious you are, you're still traumatized. Every time I see a police car, right, now it's even more of a trauma because I have my three-year-old daughter, my one-year-old infant son, and I'm thinking, is it me, right, is this something I've done, right? Um, so that's there. Every time I come, because my family is from overseas, so when I have to come, of course, they go through my phone, they go through every small thing that I have to explain. Once I have a photo, there was this one uh, you know, MMA fighter who used to come to a mosque. So uh, some people took a, a, a photo and I was in it as well. And then for some of the most uh, trivial things, they'll start asking me, okay, what type of training are you getting? What's happening? What is this? They start going through every single thing. Like, I have to answer these questions every time when I go to secondary at the airport. And um, I don't know, what, 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 what should we do? That's my question. What should we do? Where, is the, where do we draw the line? I know about our First Amendment right. And I know even certain aspects of the First Amendment about protected speech, like using profanity or vulgarity, might be protected speech, but I always tell my congregation, no, when you speak, you have to be very gentle. You always have to make sure that the other person understands, and so on and so forth. And, and I've always been open to other communities. 
I don't want to take too long. If you can see, I have a lot in my mind. I, this has been in my mind for 10 years. I never had a chance to actually speak, you know, to the law enforcement because the only interaction I had was just in the court and it's my lawyer speaking. The jury never had a chance to speak to me. What is my personality? You know, who, you know, all they saw just a scary looking person with a beard and that's all. Uh, but of course, there's more to this. You are concerned about speaking up and expressing support for the Palestinians. I'm not a subject matter expert on the First Amendment, but what I can tell you is this. Boiled down to its lowest common denominator, the FBI has two missions. To protect the American people and defend the Constitution. And the First Amendment is part of that Constitution. We are not going after people for their expression of constitutionally protected speech. Now there are things, and I'm going to ask Mark to and, and Jonathan to chime in as the experts, because it's been almost a quarter of a century since I practiced law, which means I know just enough to get me into trouble. Um, there are things people can say in citing language, true threats, right? That cross the Rubicon from constitutionally protected speech to non-constitutionally protected speech. In other words, hate speech. Hate speech, believe it or not, in most instances is constitutionally protected speech. For a very good reason, right? We don't want to suppress the opinions of people in this country.